this time I'm going to show you the latest changes that we've done to the GUI uh, in terms of dashboard and scheduler because we have done some rebranding work and we also worked on a couple of workflows uh, especially uh, to create schedules and to maintain them. So let's move over to the system so let me show you. So the new dashboard and overview can be reached from the uh, existing data protector MFC GUI by clicking the home button so once you do that you end up at the dashboard view um, th and the first item you will see is a client overview where uh, you can select down individual information like which elements are installed on certain clients and you get a nice overview of uh, data and data types that have been backed up from this client. On the right hand side you will usually find filtering options where you can select whatever operating systems or data protector versions being installed so you have a nice and easy overview uh, of your cell. Uh, of course you get some uh, capacity information. If you click the next tile in the overview you get capacity information also divided up into certain data types and uh, the next one will give you licenses overview like which of the licenses have been deployed where and how many are actually already used up. The rightmost tile give you information about um, your devices and again on the right hand side you can um, uh, select and filter for a certain device types like you want uh, to also give an easy overview. Next item from the left hand side is telemetry. Uh, telemetry will collect information about your cell and if you agree to that it uploads the information to our support databases so support engineers can work quicker with uh, information that is regarding your cell especially uh, to compare um, the versions that are installed uh, if there is bug fixes available for you and many more proactive uh, information that we can gather from it. Uh, the last but certainly the most interesting uh, element is the scheduler uh, which has changed dramatically uh, from uh, a couple of years ago. So this new scheduler uh, will give you uh, a much better overview on what you're doing over here. So let me just uh, lead you through the main items over here. So first of all you have a monthly and a daily view which we're looking at later. Uh, and you have a couple of search and filtering options down here because in larger environments you may have a couple of thousand backups going on each day um, and finding the right backup or backup specification or schedule can be uh, kind of a time-consuming event. So you can search from here, you can also filter uh, so to get the overview a little bit more straightened up especially in very large environments and on the right hand side you find uh, information about the server or the scheduler status it is actually running right now which is the normal state and from a couple of drop downs here you can actually put your scheduler in maintenance mode let's say for an hour or two because you have to apply a patch to the cell manager or whatever uh, you repair any any kind of things that are broken uh, another option that is a drop down from here it lets you access a so-called missed execution queue so if something actually failed to execute, it will end up here and you can uh, more or less decide on how you want to deal with that. Uh, another new item is also um, defining global options and changing them from here. So if you go to that kind of menu, it will lead you directly to those options, which are global to the complete cell management system here, over here. Now this is, uh, like I said, the monthly overview and if you move over to a daily view you will see what's going on on uh, those individual days. We have completely uh, kind of renovated the way it is displayed so to give you more information you see like uh, starting time, the backup specification name, the type and so on and so forth and of course the status and on the rightmost side you can actually edit a certain schedule right away so if you want to do some easy scheduling you can do that from here we also made sure that you can actually select a couple of those items individually so to enable or disable and or even to delete them very quickly so this is all aimed at large automating uh, kind of systems 
where you're running into a couple of thousand of backups per day. Again, you have some uh, searching and filtering options here because like I said before, at the end of the day, this has been done to uh, work in larger environments where you have maybe thousands of schedules going on per day and searching for them can be very time consuming. Anyway, let me just quickly show you how to create new schedules. So this is the graphical kind of way. Uh, of course, there is REST API and some other command line options to also create schedules. So first of all, um, it will kind of display you all the schedule uh, or the, the backup specifications that are um, available on your system. When you click one of them, it gets kind of highlighted. You go next. You can select from some uh, predefined schedules down here or you can select uh, custom schedules, which actually gets you into individual options. First of all, you may want you want to give it a name. Uh, you select from backup type like full or incrementals and uh, whatever the, the retention time, if you want to override what is already set up in the backup spec. Uh, from previous schedules, you know that we introduced some priority management over here. So uh, if you go for a higher priority, and two backup jobs are fighting for the same backup device, then the one with the higher priority wins. Uh, we can also uh, enable this schedule to pause lower priority jobs. So if a high priority job is coming in, it can actually pause a lower priority job, uh, do its thing, and then resume the, the other job and, and go on with it. Um, now the next item would be the recurrence. So if you want to do whatever, an hourly backup, it lets you define how m uh, or, or every which hour it should do the backup in a certain time frame in time zone so this is the kind of the the usual options that you have and the very last page will kind of check uh, if, if the configuration is okay um, so clicking next from here you get a, a summary screen that lists up all the individual items that you have configured also, another new option on the bottom right hand corner is that you can clone a schedule from here. So if you select this option, it will route you directly to the type. Uh, so you don't have to browse or select through the specifications again. So kind of nice and fast. So this concludes this short overview of the new GUI enhancements we're doing for Data Protector 1003. Hope you find it useful. Uh, thanks for watching and have a nice day.